One of the things that I think we in the Linux community are guilty of, as far as content creators go, and I'll include myself in this category as well, is we focus too much on the brand new Linux distributions. We give the new distributions a lot of coverage, a lot of love in print, in media, on video. But the older distributions, some of the older distributions that have been around for decades, we really don't give much attention to. We give them very little, if any, coverage. And one of the distributions that I think is vastly underserved in this regard is PC Linux OS. PC Linux OS has been around for nearly 20 years. At one point, it was one of the most popular desktop Linux distributions on the planet. And it's, you know, it's fallen out of favor now. One of the things about it is I never see anybody in real life using PC Linux OS. It's probably been more than a decade since I just came across anybody that said, hey, I was running PC Linux OS. I, you never see it out in the wild. At least I don't. I never have, I've never met a real person in real life that was running PC Linux OS. And even online, I've only come across maybe three or four people that were running PC Linux OS. One of them was a maintainer of PC Linux OS. So I'm not sure if that counts. Another one um, is a YouTuber uh, and, and a, a, also a journalist, tech journalist, Linux journalist, Matt Hartley, who there for a time had a YouTube channel. And I remember him, he was uh, using PC Linux OS and he promoted it pretty heavily. And I always thought that was kind of strange because Matt Hartley was like the only person that I saw using PC Linux OS. I never could understand it because I've actually taken a look at PC Linux OS a couple of times on camera. It's been a while, several years since the last time I took a look at it. But I always thought it was a really well put together distribution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the latest version of PC Linux OS. PC Linux OS, by the way, is a rolling release distribution. Uh, the last ISO they put out is a couple of months old, so not terribly old, and but I'll probably have to update after I do it installation. They do offer three different main desktop editions. They offer KDE Plasma, XFCE, and Mate. I've chosen to go with KDE Plasma because I think that's their flagship edition. I think that was the first one in the downloads list. Typically, that's what I do with these kinds of uh, distribution installations and first look. You know, what if they don't say what their flagship edition is, typically I assume it's the one at the top of the list when you go to downloads. So let me switch over to my desktop here. And I've created this virtual machine. I've given this virtual machine six gigs of RAM and two threads of my 24 thread CPU. And right away, trying to boot into the live environment, I get an error. It says failed to start the X server, which is, of course, the graphical server, right? Your display server. It says it's likely that it's not set up correctly. Would you like to view the X server output to diagnose the problem? Uh, sure, I guess I could, but what I probably am going to have to do what I've done is I went ahead and spun up a different virtual machine. Instead of using Vert Manager, I have uh, spun up a virtual box here. So let's go ahead and see if VirtualBox has any issues with the X server. Probably a, a video driver issue. I could have played around with Vert Manager and tried to, to find a driver that worked, but it's been a while since I've installed a, a, a Linux a virtual machine inside VirtualBox. And of course, the graphical server is working. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this window here. So uh, keyboard layout by default, it's uh, set to US keyboard, which is correct for me. So I'm just going to click next here. And we're in our live environment. Of course, this is KDE Plasma. I'm going to run through a quick installation. Now, one interesting thing about PC Linux OS is so many Linux distributions use the Calamaris installer and, of course, Ubuntu and all the Ubuntu flavors and Ubuntu spins. They use the Ubiquity installer. Those are the two big installer programs on Linux. I guess Fedora has the Anaconda installer, but you know, pr pretty much it's just Fedora that uses that thing and a couple of other uh, RPM-based distros that are based off of Fedora. But PC Linux OS has its own unique installer. So this is not Calamari's, it's not Ubiquity, it's its own thing. And we've come to the partitioning, it's chosen the virtual drive in this virtual machine, there's only one, and so there's nothing else to choose. Use free space or use custom disk partitioning. Yeah, let's use free space. Do I need to pick a, uh, a file system type? We have extend, two, three, and four, XFS, swap, Windows, other, but you can't really click them. So I'm just gonna go with next. I'm just gonna go with whatever the defaults are here. It says all data will be wiped. I'm pretty sure the default file system they use is extend for though. And you can see it says it's installing PC Linux OS. While that's installing, I will mention a little bit about the history of PC Linux OS. I mentioned it's about 20 years old. It started around 
2000 um, as really just some customizations to an already existing distribution, which was Mandrake. Mandrake was probably the most popular desktop Linux distribution around the year 2000. And PC Linux OS started kind of as basically a set of improvements upon Mandrake for a couple of years. That's all it was. It was just some patches to Mandrake. And then eventually around 2003, it became its own Linux distribution. And why the name PC Linux OS? That's not a great name, right? Well, the guy that created it originally, he had a website, PC Linux Online. I also think there was a PC Linux magazine as well. So when he created the distribution, PC Linux OS was the name. And again, that was about 2003. And for a couple of years, PC Linux OS, kind of like its parent, uh, Mandrake, was a very popular desktop Linux distribution. And then in late 2004, Ubuntu released its first release. And by 2006 to 2008, Ubuntu was by far the dominant player as far as desktop Linux. And you saw the very quick decline in Mandrake and PC Linux OS. Mandrake eventually died. It was forked into Mandriva and then into Open Mandriva. You also have modern implementations, kind of a descendants of it, like Magia still around. PC Linux OS, though, different kind of beast. It's not really a fork necessarily of Mandrake. PC Linux OS, one of the unique things about it is package management. Although it's an RPM-based distro, it actually uses the apt package manager, your standard apt package manager that you're used to using on Debian and Ubuntu. That's what they're using to interface with their RPM packaging. Coming back to the installer, the next portion of the installation is setting the bootloader. What bootloader to use? We have the options of Grub2 with a graphical menu, Grub2 with a text menu. I'll do the default Grub2 with the graphical menu. What device should Grub be installed to? There's only one device in this virtual machine, the one disk, so there's nothing to choose from there. And then the next section is the delay before booting the default image. It looks like it's set to 10 by default. I'll leave that. Then I'm going to click next. Then the next screen, we have defaults. I'm not sure what they're doing here. A pin. Okay, these look like uh, settings for uh, the boot. So I'm just going to leave everything as default. I don't want to play with any of that. It says bootloader installation in progress. Okay, so it's installing Grub for us. And it looks like the installation has completed. It says, please click finish and then shut down the computer, remove the USB flash drive, and then reboot. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I've rebooted the machine, and you can see we have our grub menu here. And now we've got to set a few more things for the installation to be complete because during the installer portion, remember, we didn't set things like a time zone, locale, things like that. So what is my time zone? It is correctly guessed that I am in the central time zone in the U.S. Not a lot of uh, installation programs in Linux get this right. So I'm kind of impressed that their custom installer did correctly guess where I'm at. And then we come to date, clock, time zone settings, what's the best time? My options are 141 or 1941, which is set to UTC time. Obviously, nobody wants to use UTC time. I want local time, which is the default, of course. Then we have NTP server, which uh, we don't need to play with that. And then we need to set our root password. Now, this is important. You do not have sudo on PC Linux OS. They are anti-sudo for security reasons, uh, b being an old distribution, right? Back, especially 15, 20 years ago, there was a real debate in the Linux community about sudo or no sudo, right? And for a long time, you had Debian, which refused to use sudo by default. And then Ubuntu became very popular. Ubuntu shipped sudo by default. And eventually, pretty much everybody has just adopted sudo. But PC Linux OS is still one of those rare distributions. They don't install sudo out of the box. You're going to have to switch over to the root user to do anything as root. So set a root password, a strong and secure root password. And then create your normal user. My user is going to be named DT. His login name will be DT. Let's create a strong and complicated password for this DT user. And then click Next. Then it comes to localhost and the local domain. Just give him a username, give him a password. And the first thing I want to do, of course, is fix the display resolution. So if I do display, Display configuration here inside KDE Plasma. Let's go ahead and set the resolution to 1920 by 1080. Hit apply. And then keep changes. Now, since this ISO was a little more than two months old, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a terminal 
and zoom in here and let's run an update. So to use the apt package manager, typically to do an update, you run the commands sudo apt update and then the command sudo apt upgrade. Remember, we do not have sudo. We have to switch over to the root user. So do an su, give the root password, and now just do an apt update and and apt upgrade. And I expect there to be a number of packages that have an update here in the last two to three months. So this may take a minute. Yeah, it says 334 packages need to be updated. And it took about 10 minutes or so for those 334 packages to update. So let's go ahead and do a reboot. And I've rebooted. I'm back in the desktop and there is an error here. If I move my head, the taskbar widget has crashed. I, uh, I'm assuming that massive update, here's one of the issues with rolling releases, and sometimes you take these massive updates, especially when you download an older ISO. Don't be surprised if some things are a little crazy. I could probably figure out what that error is because it does tell me some information here. It gives me an error message, uh, something about uh, plasma workspace triangle mouse filter is not installed, uh, but I'm not worried about that. That is a minor little thing that really shouldn't affect the video at all. I'm just going to do a quick uh, first look, a, a overview here. And one of the things is this menu system is very plain. Is that menu system supposed to look like that? And let's see. Can I edit this? Configure Applications menu. Show applications as names only, names and descriptions, descriptions only. Show icons on the root level of the menu. Yeah, let's try that. Let's hit Apply. Yeah, it's kind of a little strange just having text, no icons. Uh, it's a very plain kind of KDE Plasma menu, which, you know, PC Linux OS has never been heavily customized and modified. It's rather plain vanilla KDE Plasma for the most part. So quickly going through some of what is installed out of the box. Um, if I go to the menu system, under archiving, we have ARC, which is KDE's archive manager. So this would be for zip, unzip, and all of those archived formats. Also under archiving, you have GRSync, which is a graphical uh, front end to RSync. And you also have time shift, which is for taking snapshots of the system. So if I enter my root password, it's a snapshot device not available. So we'd have to create a snapshot. And, and really inside a virtual machine, I sh probably shouldn't be doing this because I don't have a lot of space in this virtual machine. But yeah, it's going to ask for a drive and we could set up times for, you know, it, for to take daily snapshots, weekly snapshots or, or whatever it happens to be. We can tell it, you know, exactly how to take the snapshots, whether it needs to do uh, rsync or butterfs or whatever it happens to be. I'm trying to just close that without setting that up. In the menu system we have a configuration category and we have configure your computer. So let's go ahead and enter our root password. So this is the PC Linux OS control center and you can see we have install and remove software. If I click on that it opens the Synaptic package manager. Synaptic is a GUI front end to the apt package manager. One of my favorite graphical package managers by the way. Synaptic. Most Debian users are familiar with the Synaptic package manager. So if you were a Debian user and you were switching over to PC Linux OS you'd be just fine with package management both the GUI versions and of course at the command line as well. We also have a sharing subcategory where we can configure FTP. That's your file transfer protocol. That's for um, sending files remotely you know to remote servers. Uh, you often have to do that with web servers and you also have configure web server as an option. Networking services here so you can configure your Ethernet hardware. So we have um, sound, graphics, mouse, keyboard, the usual suspects here for your um, hardware settings. And then we have system settings where you manage things like date and time and locale. We have network sharing. So we can configure our window shares. So that would be Samba shares. So uh, I've never actually used Samba. I don't have any com uh, Windows computers, but that's typically a uh, Windows file sharing protocol. Then you have your NFS shares, which is much more standard for those of us using Linux. You have your local disk information, security. So this would be setting up your firewall and then boot. I probably wouldn't play with some of this stuff unless you really knew what you were doing. 
Also under the configuration category, let's open the Info Center because I do want to see what versions of the software is installed as far as Plasma. We're on 5.27.2, KDE Frameworks 5.101.0, Qt version 5.15.6, and the kernel is 6.0.12. And, you know, I could have checked some of that in the terminal, and I do want to check some things in the terminal. For example, uname dash R, you guys know, will also give you the kernel. One thing I want to do is a where is system D because system D is not or hasn't been the init system in PC Linux OS. They're kind of anti system D. They never plan to move to system D. Now, when I do a where is, we have binaries for system D. System D does other stuff other than the init system, like there's networking stuff involved with system D and a whole bunch. You know, system D is a suite of applications. So the fact that system D is installed doesn't necessarily mean that that's their. A NIT system. For example, if I do a system CTL status, system CTL is not installed. That command is not found. So they're still using the old sysv init. So that's always been their init system and they have no plans to move to anything else. Now if I do an apt list dash dash installed, it says that option is not understood. So that is not an option for their version of apt. If I do man apt, there's not a man page for apt either. So I was going to get a package count of how many packages were installed on the system, but that is strange that they don't have that flag for apt, and the fact that they don't have a man page for apt is a little weird. If I do apt dash dash help, will it at least give me, yeah, it does give me a list of flags and options. But looking at the flags and options, you can see there's not one for already installed packages. Let's go ahead and close out the terminal. I'm going to go back to the menu system here. Under editors, we have KWrite, one of the standard text editors for KDE. We have file tools, so we have things like BleachBit, which helps clean up the system, get rid of like old cache files and things like that. Dolphin, of course, is KDE's file manager. Rather pretty and fully featured file manager. I quite like Dolphin. If I was a KDE user, I would really love Dolphin. The, the, really, Dolphin is one of the best programs on KDE. And also, I actually quite like their terminal. Console with a K is not bad. Like, if I wouldn't swap it out, you know, if it was already installed on the system. Some other stuff that's installed, FileLite, Gparted, which probably they should not have after the installation. That should probably just be a live USB kind of thing. And then after the installation, probably doesn't need to be on the system because Users really don't need to be playing with a partition manager. You could actually hose your system if you didn't know what you were doing. Ventoy is also installed out of the box. That is interesting. We also have Owl Riot Solitaire for some games under graphics, Gwynview, the image viewer, K Color Chooser, Krita, Scanlight for our scanning utility, and Spectacle, of course, is the screenshot utility. And one of the best screenshot utilities, actually, uh, KDE's Spectacle. Under the internet category, we're going to see some interesting stuff here. So Firefox is the default browser, nothing to see there, but some other things that you wouldn't expect most Linux distributions to ship by default. AnyDesk, Zoom, uh, Megasync, NitroShare, right? These are programs that you most Linux distributions are not going to ship most of these because they're proprietary software. You're, like, you're not, you're not going to have this pre-installed on something like Debian, for example. They'd never do that. Or even things like uh, Ubuntu and Fedora. They probably wouldn't sh ship something like Zoom out of the box. But PC Linux OS is a little more liberal as far as you know, free versus proprietary software. We also have an Office category with the latest LibreOffice, LibreOffice 7. Dot three. Let's go ahead and open the word processor. So this would be LibreOffice Writer. If it launches, I got the splash screen. That was very weird. Let me try LibreOffice Calc, which is the spreadsheet program. Okay, that comes up. I wonder why Writer didn't come up. Let me try that again just to make sure. LibreOffice Writer. Yeah, now it comes up. Yeah. That was weird. Maybe it was just the very first time I run it. You know, sometimes that happens, especially after a, a new installation. The very first time you try something, for whatever reason, it doesn't run. But then the next time you try it, I don't know. That's why a lot of times I tell people, especially when you install a Linux distribution and after the installation, if things don't seem quite right, reboot the system. <laughs> a lot of times a reboot will fix a lot of your issues. 
Under the Software Center category, we have our LibreOffice Manager, which is interesting, and of course, Synaptic Package Manager. We also have the VirtualBox Manager as well. VirtualBox Guest Editions are also available here. We also have a sound category where we have the K-Wave Sound Editor. I don't know that program. Let me go to Help About K-Wave. You can edit many sorts of audio files, including multi-track files. And it is a part of the KDE suite of applications. Um, so KDE has a ton of applications that are a part of the official KDE project. Many of them go under the radar, and that's one that has escaped me for a long time. I've, again, that's as far as I know of the first time I've heard of K-Wave. We have Pythos, which I believe is a front end to Pandora. Let me cancel that. I, I couldn't play the audio anyway for uh, copyright reasons. We also have Spotify installed as well, which is a proprietary application. Again, we got some proprietary software out of the box here, which is kind of nice because how would you get this stuff installed? You know, because it being proprietary software, most distributions are not going to have it in their repositories. Well, you'd have to go grab something like a Snap, a Flatpak, or an app image. And one thing about PC Linux OS is if I do a where is Flatpak, Flatpak is not installed out of the box. So if you want Flatpak, of course, you'd have to install it. I'm, I'm assuming I can do a sudo install Flatpak to get it. And of course, old habits die hard. You don't have sudo privileges. So switch over to the root user and do an apt install Flatpak. And there you go, Flatpak and the various dependencies for it. I'm going to decline installing that. Let's go ahead and exit out of the root user, get back to the DT user. If I do a where is snap, I don't expect it to be installed, and it's not. not no, snap D is actually the name of the, the daemon. If I do a where is app image, any chance of that being installed? No. So none of the uh, big distro agnostic package formats, snap flat packs, app images, they're not installed out of the box. But again, you could install any or all three of them if you want. Just apt install name of the package format. Let me close back out of the terminal and let me right click on the desktop. One last thing I want to do is configure desktop and wallpaper. Do they actually have any of their own wallpapers or is it just strictly the plasma wallpaper pack? It looks like yeah, these are just plasma wallpapers as part of the standard plasma wallpaper pack. They don't have, I, I thought maybe they would have some PC Linux OS branded wallpapers, but it doesn't look like it, which, you know, I mean, the default plasma wallpapers do look very nice. I'm actually actually okay with the default wallpapers, rather minimal, kind of plain. Not bad though. So that's just a quick revisiting of PC Linux OS. It's, it's been a number of years since I've checked it out and I did want to give it some coverage here on the channel because again, it's one of those distributions. It's been around nearly 20 years and again, for a time, it was actually the most popular or one of the most popular Linux distributions on the planet. If you go back to DistroWatch, which DistroWatch page hit rankings aren't a real accurate measure, but if you go back and look at DistroWatch rankings back in, you know, 2004, 2005, 2006, you know, those years back then, PC Linux OS would be at or near the top of the uh, DistroWatch rankings back then. And yet nobody, most of you guys, if you've just switched to Linux here in the last five years or so, have probably never even heard of PC Linux OS. And I think that's unfortunate because I do think, you know, some of these legacy distributions, of course, if you go back to the really ancient ones like Slackware and Debian, which both started in 1993, they're our two oldest Linux distributions. They're important for a number of reasons, but I do think it's important that we keep some of these distributions going because... So many things base off of, for example, Debian, right? Well, we could never let Debian die. It's such an important distribution where something like PC Linux OS, some people would, would say it's less important, but no, I actually think because of its place in history, you know, it, it deserves a little more love from those of us that could show it a little more love, whether it be on video or in print. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Maxim, Matt, Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, Roll, Russ, Armor, Dragon, Bash, Potato, Chuck, Commander, Gregory, George, Lee, Methos, Nate, Ur, Jan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Vador, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Tools, Devler, and Willie. 
They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at PC Linux OS wouldn't have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. An RPM distro that uses apt and sysvinit. That's unique.